It's food life, from my life to your life, intervening in both of our lives. Here it is, an all right meal. I'm gonna be honest with you straight up, it wasn't great. I made chicken pot pie, I messed up a step, I'm gonna tell you all about it. And it, it was just bland. If you wanted to take a shortcut with this meal, you could just stir some flour with some water and pepper and maybe a pinch of salt and you would probably have the same product. With this, you need celery, onion, carrot, peas, chicken, butter, flour, and that chicken broth. And that beautiful picture. I get to see it again. I love that picture. Somebody really took their time to make this stone out of stone. And they carved it in the shape of a heart and placed their chicken broth on it. It's awesome. Here we go with the celery. Eh, never mind. We're not doing that right now. We have to preheat the oven. That's, what, that's the first step because you don't want to be caught with your pants down with a cold oven. <sighs> don't want that. Oh my god. <laughs> Wash off the celery. If you see this little thumb action right here, that's the pretty much all you have to do with celery. Um, that dirty bit on the, the where the dirt is, but you don't even eat that part of the stem, so maybe just a little rinse rinse would suffice. Here we see dark days of production. Very low production going on. Uh inefficient so you know i'm loathing over low production value here and then i just line them all up chop them down one not one by one four by one <laughs> a cup of celery is all we need little trick with the peeler get that bag out baby and i love the bag i think it's the embodiment of the if the future these days it's very useful at home if you know what to do, but if you don't know what to do with it, then you're just going to throw it into a landfill with all the other trash and clog up the oceans. <sighs> when was the bag invented? Older people, let me know in the comment section. When did you see your first plastic shopping bag? Let me know. Here we see the carrots being cut down into fourths. And then I'm just... You know, I have that celery on my mind, thinking about all that celery, and I say, let's line them up, chop them down. 20 by one. Get the measuring cup vacant for the, the carrots that are about to be measured. I, li I like these Pyrex, these Pyrex measuring cups. I think they're so classic looking. Um, they've, I, can, I honestly think that these measuring cups have been in my life longer than most things in this entire kitchen. Uh, since I was a baby, we've had these measuring cups. They're, are they vintage? Does uh, early 2000 era count as vintage? I don't know. Tell me. Onion, you know how to cut it. Take off the top, take off the bottom. Slice it down the middle. <sighs> All right. Guess I was feeling a certain way this day. It was a curse day keep that in mind and this onion plays a uh, oh my gosh it was the biggest blunder of the day I have to tell you right now you know everything everything seems like it's going well you know I'm cutting the vegetables up we find a way to you know cut down on some time by lining lining the vegetables up we see oh man we got one cup of onion going on shouldn't be a problem easy thumbs up baby that's what I give you and look <laughs> I just pour them in with all the other vegetables, whatever. You'll see. I set myself up for failure. Cut up the rest of the onion, and we're getting that bag out for another bag method. Saving it for later. Hey, maybe we might make um, the, the meal in episode one. I'm not going to tell you what that meal is, so you're going to have to go see for yourself if you don't know what that meal is. I'm going to, you know, keep you in suspense there. And look at this curse. Oh my gosh bag is just slightly too small that that's a sign of a cursed day when you know it's something's just about to work out but it doesn't you ever have those days getting the chicken done with the scissors here um i learned this technique in like middle school or something because i used to like to make uh, my homemade chicken nuggets where you take the chicken dip it in the egg, dip it in the breadcrumbs, then put it into a hot pan of oil. Um, I did this a lot as a middle schooler and high schooler because I thought they tasted great. 
they did. And now we come to the end of the chicken cutting session. We fish around in there to see if there's a hidden tender. Something we might have missed. Doesn't look like it, so we're all good. Here, here's a devastating mistake. Here is where everything went south. If you saw right there, the onions were poured into the pot and essentially deemed useless by any standard of flavor or whatever you may call something like that. Um, they will just take up space in the pie now. They will just be decoration and I will have to chew them. I will have to use energy to digest them even though they give me absolutely nothing. So maybe this is a uh, boiled onions could be a weight loss tool. And now we're going to come upon our second curse of the day. Maybe even third court curse. Look at that. You, f you see what I'm feeling here? There's adhesive on the side of this pan. And I'm, I'm freaking out because I, I think, hey, this isn't coming off. If it heats up in the oven, it's going to it's gonna stick to the side of my crust. It's going to go into my body if I eat that piece of crust. I don't like stuff like that. It's definitely a foreign substance. It's definitely not safe for consumption. It's definitely freaking sticky. Nothing I can do will remedy the situation. So I'm packing it up. Oh, it's just, look at me. Oh my gosh. You can sense the frustration within my hands. And we're just packing it up because I know for a fact I'm going back to the store. I'm not gonna I'm not gonna deal with a pan like that. Cause in the back of my mind I'm one of those guys that are like, uh, did I eat the glue yet? Is the glue here? It's I can't I can't do it. If something falls on the floor, you know, I feel the sensation of all of the germs that have been collected on the piece of food or whatever in my mouth all at the same time and it's it taints the whole experience so i'm trying to i'm going out of my way to make this chicken pot pie the best i'm, I'm i could deal with it and just say hey i'll take the chance of cancer i'll take the chance of adhesive flavor being uh, just squandered oh wait look at this <laughs> this lady's just holding a banana she doesn't want it to get bruised no way I never thought to do that. But yeah, I'm going back to the store. Going to the foil section. I like how everything's made out of foil in this section. We can do a lot of things with aluminum these days. And we see uh, three pans. And it says three heavy duty pie pans. You're only getting two. That, that top one has to be thrown out immediately. Who's gonna cook with this adhesive? And you would think that the people at the factory producing these pie pans would know that their their adhesive is sticky it makes no sense to me it's like don't people test their products before they send them it's like oh we're gonna we're gonna make a product that is for baking it gets heated up at over 300 degrees in the oven the glue is gonna melt it's gonna go into the into the food and you're gonna have a lawsuit on your hands because somebody's gonna develop cancer because they're eating your glue is this the same type of glue that gets put on ice cream cones and it's sugar? It's made out of sugar? Um, probably not. It was extremely sticky and it, just give me a break. We're back. We get the pie crust. <laughs> and we, we're putting it on the pan. This is why it's called food life, because this is my life. This is These are literally the thoughts that are going through my mind as I'm just driving to the store. I'm picking out the new set of pans. I'm coming back home and just taking this time out of my day because some dude at this factory who produces pie pans didn't have the sense to QA the glue that they're using. It's like, what? All right. <laughs> get the butter into the saucepan and look another curse right right on the jacket whatever 
And this is why I don't like boiling chicken either. It's like, what is that on top? Am I supposed? I think I should fish that out. Uh, whatever. Melting the butter, cause we're the onions were supposed to go in that butter. Let me tell you that right now. They're supposed. To, the onions are supposed to go in that butter, soften, brown, produce flavor, and then you're supposed to start adding the flour to make this base for the sauce and it's a roux I think is the technical term and that that's it that's about it I mean I screwed up and I I, kn I knew it I think at this point is where I realized <laughs> look at all that pepper too I'm just trying to e eke out some type of flavor because I know it's gonna be bad already so you know I'm more than halfway through I'm gonna keep on going to make the video whatever but you know the onions were supposed to be added they're supposed to be generating all this flavor and then you know it's just a depressing it's a depressing meal to make after you know that you've botched the entire thing and you have to eat the, th the whole thing and you have to make a video and you have to edit it and you have to talk about it so I'm pretty much reliving this experience as I'm uh, recording this voiceover that uh, chicken broth image will make me feel better though. It's beautiful. Um, stirring it up. Done. We're ready to go here. Gonna strain this water out. And you, we're gonna combine this with the, uh, the sauce, quote unquote sauce thing. I don't know, is it a gravy? Is it a sauce? Um, I don't know. It, it turns into a freaking goop too. So it's like, if with the onion, would would this recipe with this look at it? It's like so, you know, is it's so viscous? It's like turning into a solid. Um, I I don't know if I would have cooked the onion and the butter. Would that have given it more liquidity and not turn out like this? It's like, uh, I don't know what's up with this recipe. I don't know what's up with me this day. It's it just ah look. It's like job of the hut if you like rolled him off of the slab that he uh, just sits on all day. Blam. Mixing it up. I'm unhappy at this point for sure. <laughs> and look, I don't want it to be too dry. <laughs> I'm just trying <laughs> to give it a little more liquid, a little more, uh, you know, look, more pepper too. <laughs> Flavor, please. <laughs> I dump it all in. Jeez. And that's why I to told you at the beginning of this video, if you want a shortcut to make this meal, mix up flour and water, put some pepper in it, and you pretty much get this. I'm coming back for chicken pot pie though. Mark my words, th this isn't the end. Because many things, the crust wasn't right with this. The, the whole inside filling wasn't right. It was dry and tasted like nothing except for pepper. I'm coming back for the chicken pot pie. Mark my words. I've made a good chicken pot pie before. I converted my friend from a vegetarian to a meat eater with a chicken pot pie that I made. So don't think that I'm incompetent. It's gonna happen. There's gonna be a redemption episode coming up in the future. 100%. Cover up the filling with the other pie crust. <laughs> and look, I'm try I'm still trying to put in some love to this meal. Look how I just press it down. Just so. And then we get the fork out. And we're gonna... I don't know what this technique is called. Uh, forking. Tining. Huh? That might catch on. Crimping. Another contender right there. We crimp... We crimp the, cr the cr crimp the crust off. Cr crimp the crust. Say that a couple times. Uh, it's kind of satisfying because the, the sides just fall right off. And just like just like me, Ma used to do it. Six slits in the top for that nice airflow going out. I don't know why you did this. It's just like a cartoon thing. I guess I guess it is for airflow. I I wonder if uh, if you don't do something like this, it, the crust may balloon up. Um, may damage the structural integrity of the crust. Who knows? Um, oven shot is botched. Look. Blam. 
whatever. This 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 whole session was weird. Put the pie in for 40 minutes. And another thing, I think you're supposed to put butter on top of the crust, but I don't know with these pre-made crusts if that's something that needs to happen. Um, I don't remember what I did last time, but I think last time I made a pot pie, it was flaky. Um, next time I make the pot pie on the redemption episode, I'm gonna try the butter, butter method. Or I heard that, um, milk, you can use milk as a type of flaker, uh, flaking chemical, whatever. And here's the other thing about this meal is cool. I doubled the recipe, so I have a pie for later. Um, you know I'm all about that. Making something in double so you can freeze the second set of thing that you just made so you can have it for later. It's great. And honestly, that, that was a huge win for this meal because I did just take out that frozen pie, thaw it out, baked it, and then it just turned out like this one. And if you, you see this one, it's... <laughs> It's not appetizing. It the crust is not flaky. It's slightly burned on this. Whatever. You can have a piece too. Look, I'm gonna feed it right to the camera. Little uh, you know, QVC action right here. Show you the insides. What's under the hood? I don't know. Nothing. Chunks of food. It's like uh, I guess maybe this is how uh, pot pie was supposed to be made. Uh, bland all right well <laughs> that's pretty much it honestly i don't know where to go with this episode it's pretty much a uh, you know you experienced my pain i think i think i conveyed it well so i'll see you in the next one peace